So what's happening in your life today? Some good? Some bad? Well, take a break and join Pastor John Torrance. He's got a message that will get you charged up again. That's right. There's nothing better than hearing God's word after a hectic day in the office. So, let's cut to Pastor John and the Durban Christian Centre family. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome all of those that have joined us by way of live stream. I know that we're well into our service. And from whatever part of the world you are watching from this morning, we welcome you. Can we put our hands together and give all of our live streamers a big God bless you. Amen. For the next couple of weeks, I want to just talk to you a little bit about dreaming big. Dreaming big. Look at somebody right now and, and tell them, I dare you to dream big. Come on, look at somebody this morning, challenge them and tell them, I'm talking to you, dream big. Would you look at somebody else and tell them, I believe God is saying to you, dream big. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? I looked up some of the meanings of a dreamer, the word dreamer. And in the Collins Dictionary, it says someone who spends a lot of time thinking about and planning for things that they would like to happen, but which are improbable or impractical. The Urban Dictionary says someone whose mind knows no limits. I think I like that definition. That's what a dreamer is. Somebody whose mind knows no limits. Come on, if you're going to dream big, your mind has to tell you that there's no limits in God. Can you say amen? amen. The dictionary.com definition says that a dreamer is a person who dreams. Oh, okay, thank you for that. Or a person who lives in a world of fantasy. One who is impractical and unrealistic. A person whose ideas or projects are considered audacious. Hmm. Bump your neighbor and say, I feel audacious this morning. Or it says highly speculative, or it says a visionary. Anybody here that considers themselves to be a visionary this morning? I like this one definition. It says a dreamer is defined as one who dreams, an idealist, a visionary, one who sees what is possible and believes that it can happen. One who sees what is possible and believes that it can happen. Hallelujah. As I was looking at Hebrews chapter 11, which you know is the faith chapter. Hebrews 11 is full of names of people who really have, uh, if you look at that chapter, who really have exemplified their faith in God. Actually, when you look at Hebrews 11, it's a little bit more than that. Hebrews 11 is about people that are just like you and me, just ordinary people, but who are people who left behind phenomenal legacies like our founder, Pastor Fred, because they were dreamers and who dared to believe God for big things. This morning, I want to expand you a little bit. I want to enlarge in your capacity and I want you to dare to dream with God and to dream big things with God. Can you say amen? When you look at Hebrews 11, each life there represents a story and a promise that they believed would become a reality, even if they didn't actually see it with their own physical eyes and in their own lifetime. But the people in Acts 11 were credited with faith because they believed in the unbelievable. Say after me, a dreamer, one who dreams big, is somebody, is, is somebody who believed in the unbelievable. Is someone who believed in the unbelievable. Have a look with me in Hebrews 11 and verse 2. And it says there in the New Living Translation, NLT, that it says through their faith, talking about all these people, through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. A good what? A good reputation. In other words, the fact that they used their faith to dream the dreams of God earned them a good reputation. You know what I've learned? That you can never lose with God. You have more to gain with God than without God. And when you use your faith to dream with God, He'll make sure you have a good reputation. And with a good reputation comes a good name. 
Can I get a better amen in this place? I know that there are people out there that will tarnish your name and maybe because of jealousy and envy or whatever. And I know that sometimes we tarnish our own uh, names because of bad choices that we make in life. But I'm here to tell you this morning, family of God, that when you partner with God, you will always stand to gain and never to lose. Would you lift your hands with me and say, the Holy Spirit is my covenant partner. Say it like you have a bit of faith this morning. The Holy Spirit is my covenant partner. And when I partner with Him, I always stand to gain and never to lose. Hebrews 11 and verse 2 in the message translation kind of changes it a little bit and says, The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors, set them above the crowd. Set them above the crowd. That's what the Message Bible says. The Message says that their faith, they used their faith to dream the dreams of God and God distinguished them and set them above the crowd. Hallelujah. That's why we love to preach faith in this house. And we were taught faith by our founder. And every time Sister Nell gets up here, she will always inspire faith on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And especially when it comes to dreaming the dreams of God. I'm here to tell you this morning, family, that God Himself is a dreamer. And He's looking for anyone that will have the faith to dream His dreams with Him. Deep-seated in the heart and soul of every human being lies the dreams of God. How do we know this? Because the Bible says we were created in the image of God. We were formed, framed, and fashioned by Him. We were made by God, created in His likeness. That's what Genesis 1.26 says in the New King James. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our own image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And so, verse 27 says, God created man and woman in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Then he blessed them. And God said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Can you say amen? The ability to dream is because you and I were made in the image of God. And it is a gift from God to every one of us. Say this after me. Because I am made in the image of God, I have been given, I have been given the ability to dream the dreams of God. It is a gift that God gives to me and I receive it in Jesus' name. And when God made you in His image family, He dropped into your spirits your futures. That's why He knows your end from the beginning or your beginning from the end. He's the Alpha and Omega. He knows the stories that our lives are supposed to tell. And every one of us has a unique story to tell. Would you look at somebody and tell them, I have a unique story to tell. Come on. Come on, I don't care if you don't believe it or if you do believe it or if you half believe it. Look at somebody and tell them, I have a story to tell. Look at somebody and tell them, you have a story to tell this morning. And it's not so much the verbal story that we speak with our mouths, but it's the story that we outwardly demonstrate by the lives that we live every day, living for Jesus Fulfilling every purpose and plan that's been given to God, to every one of us. That's His will for you and that's His will for me. Can you say amen? You see, we not only have a union with Christ, which happens when we come to know God. And it's what we call being born again or having an encounter with God. Your spirit being made one with God's spirit. Your spirit coming into fellowship and into communion with God, which is a supernatural encounter that God gives, hallelujah, demonstrated by a supernatural outward change in your life. 
But then we have a freedom that comes with God as well. There is freedom in the cross. How? Every time we commune with Christ. It's not just a union, but it's about communing as well. Communing with God. Every time we commune and we fellowship with God, what happens? We get to know the heart of God more and more. We discover those things that please Him and our wills begin to be reshaped and redesigned. And it's no longer us running after what pleases us, but rather running after what pleases Him because we discover that those things that are in His heart and in those things we find are the dreams of God for us. Can you say amen? I want you to know that it's impossible to dream the dreams of God and not know Him and not fellowship with Him. Outside of Him, every dream of God stops flowing. The source is cut. It's like a branch that is cut off from the tree. I believe that part of the freedom that we experience in Jesus Christ is the freedom to dream allowing the creativity and the wisdom of God to flow unhindered in your life. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Lift up your hands and say, part of my freedom is the freedom to dream with God, allowing the creativity and wisdom of God to flow unhindered through my life. Can you say amen? Let me tell you, there's nothing that will make the heads of the world turn more than when you and I begin to dream the dreams of God. Hallelujah. When that creativity flows and that wisdom flows, let me tell you, it's what turned the heads in Daniel's day. When they looked at him and they saw they saw the creativity of God, they saw the wisdom of God. He was able to dream the dreams of God and he made heads turn. It's what happened in the days of Joseph. It's what happened in the days of Nehemiah and Ezra. And I prophesy that it will happen in your and my day. Hallelujah. Bump your neighbor and say, I dare you to dream the dreams of God. Every generation has had its dreamers. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, but those dreamers were just ordinary people who placed their faith in God and who dared to think outside of man-made boxes. I'm here to challenge some of you. I I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I'm here to prod some of you. I'm here to challenge some of you. Maybe you've looked at the economy and there's not much that we can look at. Maybe you've looked at politicians and they're trying their best to help. Maybe you've looked at the Rand dollar and that's the best it can do. Maybe you've looked at the stock exchange and that's the best it can do. But I'm here to tell you, come on, let's think outside of man-made boxes and man-made systems and let's begin to dream the dream of God. And when you begin to dream the dreams of God, let me tell you, it won't be a small dream. It won't be a little dream. It won't be an average dream. It won't be a mediocre dream, but it'll be a big dream that will cause the heads of the world to turn and notice something about your life. Can you say praise the Lord? I believe that we are in that generation Hallelujah, who refuse to be intimidated by the opinions of others. And instead, against all odds, against all odds, Pastor Danny spoke about it this morning, who against all odds, we continue to move forward. We continue to advance the kingdom of Jesus Christ on this earth. Can you say praise the Lord? I believe that we are that generation Now, that not only dreams the dreams of God, but we also get to live out those dreams. Amen. I don't want to just dream the dreams. I want to live the dreams. I want the dreams to be fulfilled. And then when the next generation comes, I want them to dream the dreams and then to live the dreams. And then when the next generation comes, I want them to dream the dreams and for them to live out the dreams. Lift your hands and say, I am part of that generation that will not only dream the dreams of God, but get to live out those same dreams. I'll get to live out those same dreams. Everything in the kingdom of God, family, works on the concept of faith. It takes faith to get saved. It takes faith to get healed. It takes faith to get delivered. 
It takes faith to believe God for every miracle of God. And it takes faith to dream the dreams of God. It's the same kind of faith each and every time. And when you use your faith to dream the dreams of God, He sets you apart. He sets you above the crowd. He distinguishes you from every other. Not to say that you're better or that you're more holier or more righteous. No. But when you dream the dreams of God, He sets you above the norm. He sets you above the average. That's why we keep saying that God never designed us for the average. Hallelujah. God invested too much in us for us just to be average and mediocre in life. Hallelujah. I can look by the expression on your faith that that's some, a hard pill for some of you to swallow because you've been fed so many lies and you were born on this side of the railway track and your surname is this and your color is this and your culture is this and you've only got that education. But I pull down every lie of the enemy, every word that's come against you, that's come to limit you in Jesus' mighty name. You were not created by God for average. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you got your standard three or your grade one or whatever it is. You were designed by God for excellence and the best that He has for you. Come on, man. I dare you to dream with God. I dare you to exercise your faith to dream the impossible. I dare you this morning to dream the unimaginable. Would you dare, I dare you to dream the unseen, the unheard of before. I dare you to dream the unthinkable, the inconceivable, that which is illogical and unreasonable. I challenge you to dream the dreams of God. Come on, dream that which is breathtaking. Dream that which is overwhelming. Dream that which is staggering. Dream that which is amazingly incredible. Hallelujah. Dream with God and allow Him to use your life to demonstrate His power, His wisdom, His goodness, and His abundance. Can you say praise the Lord? One of the characters that are in that by, that are in chapter 11 is a man by the name of Abraham. And the one night God led him outside because Abraham was dreaming too small. And he was a man of faith. God had called him from out of the land of Ur of the Chaldeans. And he was in a pagan land. He had a pagan father who was a pagan worshiper. When you look at Abraham, the odds were surely stacked against him. They, the odds were against Abraham. God was looking for somebody, and here was a man that in the natural would never have qualified. Maybe you and I, having a look at Abraham, would never thought of anything coming from Abraham. But you see, Abraham was searching. He had a heart that was hungry for God. He was dissatisfied with where he was. And God said, come on, Abraham. I know that your heart is for more. I know that deep down on the inside of you, there is a restless and there is a dissatisfied holiness on the inside of you. Come, I want to take you outside. And the Bible says he begins to show Abraham the stars. Can we get the next slide with the stars? He shows him the stars and there's the stars. He says, Abraham, can you count? I think I can count. I want you to begin to count the stars. And Abraham begins to count one, two, three, four, five five, six, I don't know, maybe Abraham got to a thousand, maybe he got to 10,000, maybe he got to 50,000, maybe he got to a million, I don't know. And then what happened was the illogical, the unreasonable, you know, just couldn't quite fathom what was going on. He says, come on, I want you to know that when you dream with God, it's bigger than what your brain can compute. It's bigger than what people have said about you. It's bigger than what your teacher has said about you. Hallelujah. Come on, family of God. I want you to not only dream with God, but you can dream big with God. And then he said, if that's not enough, come on, I want you to look at the sand, Abraham. Come on, can you count the grains of sand? 
Come on, let's begin. One, two, three. And again, Abraham began to count the grains of sand until smoke began to come out of his ears and he lost count. He, there's just too many grains of sand. That's right, Abraham. That's how big my dream is for you. That's how big my blessing is for you. That's how big a job, a work I want to do in your life. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? I want to encourage you over these next couple of weeks to expand your faith. Don't look at the natural. Don't look at what you can see with your eye. Don't look at what you can hear with your natural ear. But there is something bigger and something greater that God wants to do in and through your life. Can you say amen? amen. Lift your hands and say these words after me. I am a faith person that has a faith covenant with a faith God. And today... The spirit of faith has risen in my heart. Thank you, Lord, for this word that I receive. I am your covenant partner, and I will always stand to gain and never to lose when I dream with you. I'm not going to dream small, Lord. I'm not going to dream little. No, I thank you today that I'm going to dream big. You're going to expand my faith. You're going to expand my vision. You're going to expand my territory. You're going to expand my capacity. Right now, your word comes. And as your word comes, it brings life. It brings favor. It brings the blessing of God. I am highly favored. You have got a plan for my life. You have got a purpose for my life. Deep seated in me. Deep seated in me are the dreams of God. And I declare that I shall dream the dreams of God in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, give the Lord a praise offering this morning. Now that is just my intro to dreaming big with God. We're going to look at a whole lot of stuff about how we can dream big with God. Amen. I believe that it's the will of God for every person to dream the dreams of God. That's where the miracles lie. That's where the fulfillment of every promise lies. That's where you and I become our very best. There's only one person that can be the best you and that's you. Nobody else can be you. You are, you were called by God to be you. And when you are you, you become the best version of you. Hallelujah. And over this period, over this time, a lot of who we are, a lot of what we are, is determined by what happens between these two ears. Because we've been brainwashed. And that's why renewing our minds in the Word is what, will, is, is what produces a transformed life. When we begin to think like God thinks about us and we begin to adopt His viewpoint on what pertains to us, what pertains to my family, what pertains to my children, this is where it all happens. The only person that can stop you dreaming the dreams of God is you. Or if you allow people, because in the, invariably you hear somebody saying this and you take that word and then fear comes in and doubt and unbelief. But I want to prophesy over every one of you. You have the capacity to dream with God. Every one of you. I don't care if you robbed a bank yesterday and you repented today. I'm just kidding, but you know what I'm trying to say. Everybody has the ability to dream the dreams of God. And our prayer is that you will dream the dreams of God and see the fulfillment of every promise of God in your life. With every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. I spoke about how dreaming the dreams of God is because you're made in the image. God is the dreamer. He is the, the person. I mean, listen, God dreamed of you and I. He dreamed of a world. He dreamed of a sun, star. And whatever He dreamed, He spoke into existence. So God is the dreamer of all dreamers. And placed on the inside of you and me are dreams. Because we're made in the image of God. And that comes as we come into union with God. 
when we come into union with God. You see, the devil, his main purpose is to take you out of union, to discredit you, to make you believe what the others are saying about you, to, to, to rob you of who God says you are and what you have and what you can do. That's what the devil does. And he does it not through power. He has no power, but he does it through temptation, through seduction, through deception. That's how he operates. He is the master deceiver. He is the master illusionist. And he gets you to believe a lie. But this morning, I want you to know that Jesus is here. Every person today that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior can come today. You can come just as you are, whoever you are. You can come this morning. If you're away from God for whatever reason, and maybe it's because you made a bad choice, a bad decision. These things happen and it's understandable. But I don't want you to stay in that place this morning. You don't need to be bound to that bad choice. You don't need to be bound to that guilt and that condemnation because that's what failure does. That's what sin does. But today, Jesus who came to liberate you and I, is here to liberate you and I this morning, 2,000 years ago. That's the cross. The cross is a sign of freedom. Freedom. That you don't have to be bound. No, it's not based on how many hallelujahs you can say or how many times you can roll on the ground, but it's just simply based on your coming to the realization, hey, I failed. I missed the mark. Lord, I, I, I messed up and I'm sorry. And this morning that we acknowledge the fact that we need a Savior. Jesus is our Lord, but He's also our Savior. And those are the two most vital things about you coming into union with Jesus Christ. Is that He's not only your Lord, but He's your Savior come to redeem you from out of that place of guilt and failure and misery and agony and suffering and all kinds of stuff. And today you can come from out of there. You don't have to stay in that pit. You don't have to stay in that place of hopelessness. You can come as you are with every head bowed, every eye closed today. Whoever you are, up in the balcony, right over here, you say, Pastor John, you're talking to me. That was great. I want to dream the dreams of God. But today my life is not right with God. I'm away from God. And things have happened and I'm not too proud of them. And we're not here to showcase that. But you say, I need you to pray for me. I need Jesus. I need His blood to cleanse me. I need His forgiveness. Would you pray for me? And I, I would be honored to pray with you, whoever you are right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. This has got nothing to do with anybody. This is just simply between you and God. And just a simple act like this of faith. It's amazing the door that opens for us, the opportunity. It's amazing. It's amazing when we just incline ourselves and just, and just respond. It's amazing to what God can do in our lives. Sometimes we wonder why God doesn't do anything. It's because we haven't responded. But God, God works on our response. He moves on our response. And so this morning, what's my response, Pastor? Just to open your heart, to say yes to Jesus, to acknowledge that you need a Lord, not a Lord, but the Lord of all lords, the King of all kings, and that you acknowledge Jesus as your Savior this morning. That's all. That's all it is. If that's you, I'm going to count to three. When I get to three, I want you just to lift up your hand. And this is not to embarrass you. This is just so that we can identify you and I can join my faith together with you and pray for you. And let me tell you, this is not a moment to be embarrassed in heaven. They're about to give you a standing ovation when you lift your hand. There's going to be a party. There is there's a noise in heaven every time someone responds for Jesus Christ. I mean, there is a celebration taking place and about to take place. All right. So here we go. I'm going to count to three. One, 
two, get ready. Three, lift your hand up high. Say, here's my hand, Pastor. I'm coming as I am. Would you pray for me? Just wave your hand. You say, here's my hand this morning. I'm coming. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Anybody else in the back? I see that hand. God bless you. Anybody else? I see that hand in the back. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Just lift up your hand. Don't be shy. I want everybody right now to pray this prayer. Would you say after me, Heavenly Father, I come to you today in Jesus' name, just as I am with all of my faults, all of my failures, and all of my sin. And I ask you for forgiveness right now. With my heart, I believe. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ, you're my Lord and Savior. You are the Son of the living God. You died for me. And today, your blood cleanses me and washes me. I receive eternal life and the forgiveness of all of my sins. And I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I trust you got a booster from that word. And if you enjoy watching us, please let us know. And like our page and subscribe to our channel. Yep. We also look forward to your comments and suggestions. Until next time, stay, stay blessed. blessed.